Good evening, and welcome to the West River Modified Union Education District 2021 Annual Meeting. I'm glad you can attend this unusual, unusual meeting during these unusual times. My name is David Lebo. It is my privilege to serve as your education district moderator and will be the moderator for this meeting. Before we begin, I would like to review some instructions on how to participate in the meeting and the meeting guidelines. Please turn off your video and mute your microphone. If you're joining by phone, use star six to mute or unmute. Please make sure your name is displayed correctly on screen so you can be called on correctly. Use the rename function to make any changes. If you wish to speak, please raise, use the raise hand feature under reactions or participants. If you are joining by phone, use star nine to raise or lower your hand. The chat will not be monitored. It's actually disabled. It can't be used. Please use the raise hand feature if you wanna participate. I will call your name or the last four digits of your phone number to speak. Please turn on your video and unmute your microphone. Before you ask your question, please identify yourself and your town. After you're done speaking, please stop your video and mute your microphone. I would like to remind you that this is an informational meeting to answer questions related to the warned articles. Unfortunately, this is not the venue to opine on other issues. I will call on participants as hands are raised. Use the hand raise feature or star nine on your phone. To keep things moving, I'll allow all to speak once per article and, that, and then not more than twice. When we get to an election, I'll allow a candidate a brief introduction and background if they would like. Campaign speeches will be deemed out of order. Remember, we are not voting on any articles tonight. There can be no motions or amendments. You cannot change the articles. This is purely an informational meeting. Please ask clarifying questions on the warned articles. The election on these articles as written is tomorrow, Wednesday, March 23rd, at your respective polling places from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., except Wyndham, uh, they start at 10 a.m. At this time, I would like to introduce the West River Modified Union Education Board, starting from the top. Al. Hello, David. Yes, I am Al Clausen, hailing from Townsend, Vermont. Thank you, Al. Joe. Hi, thanks, David. I'm Joe Winrick. I'm also from Townsend, Vermont. Mike. Hey, Mike Foley, also from Townsend, but I'm an at-large, so I represent all the towns. Thank you, Mike. Keegan. Is he here? Keegan's not on tonight, David. Yes, I don't see. Okay. Keegan is from Jamaica. Dana. Uh, Dana West from Jamaica. Leanne. Hi, Leanne Jolson from Brookline. Howard. Howard, no, no. Uh, Emily, Emily's, no, no, Emily Long. Howard from Wyndham, Emily's from Newfane. Kenneth. Here, uh, just wanted to point out that um, when you were giving your little spiel in the beginning, uh, you said tomorrow, March 23rd, is the vote, it's actually March 24th. Thank you for the correction. Okay, just so we don't send anybody where they're not supposed to be. Right, thank you. Kenneth is from Newfane. Is Trish here? No, Lindsay? Hi, Lindsay Bertram from Newfane. Uh, are there any of the student members here? Abby, Ansley? No. Okay. That's your West River Education District Board and the superintendent. Sorry, where's he? Leanne. Good evening, Bill Anton, superintendent. There you go. Okay. Um, and I would like to thank the school board, the administration, the teachers, and all the employees for all the hard work that they do for our towns. I now call the West River Mod Union. I now call the West River Modified Union Education District 2021 annual meeting to order. The legal voters of the West River Modified Education District, comprising the voters of the towns of Brookline, Jamaica, Newfane, Townsend, and Wyndham, 
for pre-kindergarten through grade 12 are hereby warned and notified that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Board of Schools Board of School Directors has determined pursuant to provision of Act 162 that all articles of business for the 2021 annual meeting will be voted by Australian ballot on Wednesday, March 24th, 2021 at their respective polling places on Wednesday, March 24th, 2021 at 9 a.m. at which time the polls will open and 7 p.m. at which time the polls will close to vote by Australian ballot on the following articles of business. If there's no objection, I will refrain from reading the entire warning. Excellent. No objection. Thank you. Okay. So the 24th is the vote. Article one, to elect the moderator. Does anybody want to run for moderator and want to speak to the moderator? Yeah, I don't see anybody. Okay. Moving on to article two, to elect a clerk. Anybody interested in speaking to the position of clerk? Oh, wait, I gotta do something here. Mm, here we go. Okay, seeing no hands raised, we'll move on to elect article three, to elect a treasurer. Anybody interested in speaking to the treasurer position? I see no hands raised. Moving on to article four. Shall the voters of the district authorize the board of school directors to borrow money by issuance of bonds or notes not in excess of anticipated revenues for the next fiscal year? Any questions about article four? I see no hands raised. Seeing no hands raised, we'll move on to article five. Shall the voters of the district, oh, shall the voters of the district approve compensation to the current officers for their service during fiscal year 2022 in the following amounts? Moderator, $250. Clerk, $2,000. Treasurer, $2,000. Any questions on Article 5? Raise hand feature or star nine? I see no hands raised. We're moving on to Article 6. Shall the voters of the district approve compensation to the school directors for their service during the fiscal year 2022 at $1,000 directors and $1,200 chair? Any questions on Article 6? Raise hand, star nine feature. Seeing no hands, move on to Article 7. Shall the voters of the district set the date of 20? of 2022 annual meeting as the fourth Tuesday in March. Any questions about article seven? I'm cheating. The fourth Tuesday of March, one, two, three, four, the 22nd, I still would have been wrong. Bummer, okay. Next, that's article seven. Article eight. Shall the voters of the West River Modified Union Education District U072A approve the school board to expend $12,115,000 for grades pre-K through 12, which is the amount the school board is determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year. It is estimated that the proposed budget, if approved, will result in education spending of $22,844 per equalized pupil. This projected spending per equalized pupil is 1.723% higher than spending for the current year. We have a, is there any questions? Anybody say, uh, Al does, you wanna, go ahead, Al. I just wanted to say that our chief financial officer, Lori Garland has a most excellent presentation uh, that she would like to go through at this point if we could. Excellent. Let's let's uh, you have a share screen feature. Uh, Joe will be sharing. Beautiful. So good evening, everybody. Um, we went through this on the informational meeting on the 15th. So I'm going to, uh, you know, pretty much make this pretty brief. Uh, but if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to ask. 
And uh, for all of you that were on that meeting of all of the board members, and I see some familiar names out there, feel free to, you know, uh, snooze a little or something. So here we go, you guys. Um, the review of the budget information meeting and how it affects the tax. All right, Joe. Well, okay. So this is um, in the West River Modified Education District, all students will have an outstanding educational experience in a safe and welcoming environment so that they may achieve and surpass their learning goals. The West River Modified Education District is responsible to the needs of its community and provides the necessary systems, staffing and resources needed to ensure that all of our students will become informed, empowered and engaged global citizens. All right, so just to look at the um, districts and give you some quick fast facts for anybody um, that has uh, is not aware, there are three elementary schools that serve pre-K through grade five and one middle high school, grade six through grade 12. And that's roughly about 524 students that West River is responsible for. And just a quick breakdown on these. Um, we have Newbrook that runs straight grades with 86 students. Uh, Jamaica to the um, north has 23 students and they run combined grades of K-1-2 and, and then a, a grade three, four, five. Leland and Gray uh, is grades six through 12 with 287 students. And Townsend right across the way with 98 students. Uh, and they also run straight grades with a pre-K through five. These are the West River uh, District values, which are uh, taken into consideration. Uh, obviously it's one of the guiding um, documents that we use when creating the budget. Um, I won't go through them at this point in time, but this presentation is available on the uh, West River uh, ed website, um, and that website is westrivered.org. All right, ready to go, Joe. There we go. So the budget development, uh, we use the values and then guiding principles, making student-centered decisions, making sure there's enough funding for our tier one, our teaching support, and also for our other students as well. Um, investing in safe uh, and functional plants, um, ensuring uh, equality of opportunity for students and taking a long-term perspective, which we'll come back to, um, and to be transparent. So included in this budget, um, this board approved budget are uh, these numerous items here. And so we uh, base the tax rate is calculated on fiscal year 21's ADM. Um, so this is important. This was a, home, a hold harmless uh, provision that was put in place by the legislature um, because of COVID. So, uh, you know, as you know, many students uh, were being homeschooled, which affected the count, which in um, then affects the equalized pupils, which affects the tax rate. So this was a, an important uh, provision that the legislature put in place for this year. There were staffing changes that occurred after the, the current budget that we're in that was approved. Um, so you'll see some, you know, uh, positive and negative um, throughout the, the budget due to these uh, di just different people and different benefits. Negotiated and non-certified staff increases, um, benefit changes. Uh, we had a 10% increase in premiums this year, which is actually the lowest it's been in several years. Um, increases and decreases from the uh, approved WCSU superintendent's budget, special education budget. Um, these uh, came into West River, uh, basically um, was a decrease from year over year. So that was great. And those budgets can be found on the Wyndham Central website um, if anybody wants to look at them. Um, we had increases in repairs and maintenance, uh, particularly around HVAC maintenance estimates. Um, they, the districts uh, did a lot of upgrades to the HVAC systems through the Efficiency Vermont grants. 
And so now it's important to put in those yearly maintenance costs, um, which were substantial. There was a recommendation by the budget committee and the full board to use $300,000 of fund balance to reduce the tax burden. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later in the presentation. And then a reduction of in force of one administrator. So the year over year comparison uh, of the expense budget is the budget is up less than a percent, $80,000. Um, so really coming in uh, with a minimal increase. Go to the next one. And um, revenues is where there was some issues. Uh, so revenues were actually down quite a bit. And basically the reason that the board decided to use some fund balance to um, offset some of the loss in revenue. So the loss of revenue was basically from uh, tuition students coming to Leland and Gray um, was reduced from basically in fiscal year 21, we estimated about 45 students. And this year we had to estimate about uh, 30, I'm sorry, 29. So quite a reduction there. And this is just a, um, a result of declining enrollment, uh, really. Okay, Joe. So the projected unified tax rate, it came in at $1.96, uh, two cents less than last year's um, unified tax rate. And that does include the four cent merger incentive. So um, as a district that um, voluntarily uh, merged, uh, there was incentives and the, uh, we are on year three. So we have two more incentive years to go. So using reserves, so the reserves, um, the operational reserve uh, was, is estimated to be $624,000 um, using 300,000 of it will leave 324 for future years. Typically we like to see this, an operational reserve to be five to 10% of the operational budget. Um, but we also are projecting a surplus in fiscal year 21 that will uh, increase this. So what does using this $300,000 do? It lowers the tax rate by 10 cents. So this was an important um, uh, decision by the board. Um, it also reduces the penalty, which we'll talk about in a few minutes by $586 per pupil. So just a quick, from fiscal year 20 to 22, um, you know, the increases in the budget uh, from 20 to 21, it was 2.88% increase and in from 21 to 22, a 0.66 increase. Okay, so what are the, what is this budget made up of? Um, so 60%, just about 60% of it is direct instruction to the students. Um, another 8% is support services, which is you know, your nurses and your guidance counselors. So all of that um, is going towards um, student-centered. Um, and then the rest of the 33% the left is you know, the, the board cost, the administration cost, the technology, building operations, transportation, food service, and debt. So getting to a cost per student, um, I'm gonna go through this fairly quickly. Um, I think that most people have seen me present this information before, but please feel free to jump in and ask questions. Um, this is Vermont's funding formula um, broken down very simply. So your expenses, uh, the $12 million with your offsetting revenues um, subtracted give you your ed spending or the amount that needs to be raised by taxes um, to support uh, West River's budget. So um, the equalized pupil count that we talked about, um, again, this had a, a major impact of that legislation. So this actually stayed right about the same as last year where if we had had a true count of ADM, uh, this would have dropped quite a bit. So of course, if it had dropped, then the cost per student would be uh, higher. So that gives us a, a cost per student of $21,000, uh, $138. So 
then there's a threshold that is by, set by the state um, as a cost containment measure. And this is changes yearly. It went up $33 this year, so very minimally. Um, and we subtract that from the cost per student. And that is what is known as the penalty. Um, so that is what needs to be added to the cost per student or what is being you are being um, double taxed on. So there are some exclusions, which we look for um, you know, uh, <laughs> deeply and to reduce this penalty of, and so we came in around $644 per student. So that gave a penalty of um, 1,706. So we add that to the cost per student and we have a cost per student of $22,844, which is what you see on your warning. All right. So just a quick side road. Um, this is actually really important. So without the threshold, um, if they're, you know, pretend there was not a threshold, a cost containment measure, then the cost per student we saw would have been $21,138. So that would have returned a tax rate of $1.82 um, with the merger. That's 14 cents less than the current projected tax rate. Okay, that's just for the penalty. And there is legislation right now um, on this, and it's it has to do with um, equity in how the uh, weights are distributed for that equalized pupil number that we talked about. So if the weights were um, in the favor of West River, that equalized pupil number would be up and that would reduce the penalty. It might even eradicate the, the penalty. So this is important and there is a letter on um, the WRED website that people can uh, fill out and send uh, to their local state representative. So important to uh, be involved in this. Right. So continuing on, uh, the yield um, is set by the state and uh, this number is uh, came in at $11,385. So it's, you know, basic Take the yield and divide it by the cost per pupil and you have your unified tax rate, which is $2. So um, of course we have the incentive uh, for merging so we can subtract that and that's how we got to the unified tax rate. So how does that play out through the different towns, right? Because everybody pays a little bit differently. So in comes the CLA, the common level of appraisal, which um, is on your tax bill, you'll see it. and these are the CLAs for this year. And so Bro both Brookline and Jamaica uh, were actually hit pretty hard with a change in CLA. And we'll talk about that in the next slide. So as we look at this year over year tax and CLA change, you know, just taking Brookline for the example, uh, we see that they have a 9.64% uh, increase um, in their taxes. Um, 17 cents. And if you continue across, you look at the CLA and you can see what happened to the CLA. So when the CLA is above 100, then your tax rate um, goes down. If it uh, comes down, then your tax rate is going to go up. So they lost 5.38% CLA this year. Had they not lost that, their increase would be two cents on the tax rate. So um, you can see how the CLA plays into that. Jamaica also um, had a CLA reduction of 2.77% and then the other two basically stayed the same. All right, so there's, if you own property, there are two ways to pay. So you could pay by um, your property value and or there is what is known as the property tax adjustment. So if you earn less than 136.5, you are eligible for a state payment. To note that households earning less than 47,000 are only paying on income and the local spending does not um, play into this. So, but if you own, if you have a household income above 136,000, then you don't qualify for the property tax adjustment. All right. 
So we've got um, you know, one sample here of a household that earns $50,000. They live in a $200,000 house. They did get a, a property tax credit. Um, and last year and then this year, they also get a credit. Um, but you can see that the tax that they're paying between um, last year and this year is an increase of $108 or 6%. So just to point out that this, this is very generalized and there are, um, there's a really great tool on the Vermont Department of uh, the Tax Department's website that how you can figure out your, your credit, your property tax credit. So um, I would encourage anybody to uh, visit the site and work it through. And then we have um, the other extreme, which is, you know, a, a household that earns 150,000. They, they live in a, a $200,000 house and they're paying based on their property worth. And they um, would have paid $3,973 and in 22 will pay $4,070, which is um, $97 more and they live in Jamaica. So we saw that 2.5% increase uh, in the previous slide. And then I just, I threw in Brookline because they were, they have uh, been the, the most affected this year. Um, so you can see the difference uh, between the towns of how this works. And, you know, in fiscal year 21, the household would have paid 3,568 and in 22, we'll pay 3,913. So, you know, we see that 9.6% increase or the $344. So you can see how the CLA affected that. What's the next step? Vote. One article, as we just read, that's very exciting. Um, not to. So, um, you know, get out and, uh, and vote. And the polling places and times are in the annual report as well. And before, um, it's up to Al, but do you want me to talk about future planning or we want to stop there? Happy to do either. Yeah, Lori, I mean, I guess since we're live and, and people can always reflect on this informational meeting, might as well uh, give them a a little dose of that. Sounds good. Sure. sure. So <clears throat> before we end for tonight, I want to talk a little bit about what the board has been doing for future planning as we talked about that long term vision um, that is has started to happen and uh, will continue. Um, and, you know, one of the reasons if you flip to the next slide, Joe, we'll look at the student population um, projections. And so you can see that, you know, this is this is quite a drop um, and it's a uh, 9% over the next eight years. So, um, you know, we have to uh, look at this and the board has been looking at this, um, these numbers here. Go ahead to the next slide, Joe. So the, bo the budget committee and the full board, um, they met last spring and they were presented with 11 to 12 uh, restructuring options to reset the tax rate. Um, the budget committee reduced this down to three options and uh, was the intent to do a deeper dive on, on those three options and get public feedback um, and all of that. And then we know what happened, COVID hit, right? So the board made the decision uh, considering COVID's disruption to not pursue any structural or really any major changes for fiscal year 22. But um, you know, as we've heard in the board meetings, uh, the budget committee and full board has committed to, to continue this work, uh, starting again um, in you know this spring. So, what's your role in future planning? Your valued input. Contact your board representative. Tell them your dreams. Tell them what you value. Um, help them to understand. Um, help them to make the decisions um, for the students and surveys. I'm sure there will be surveys going out that will guide decisions, fill them out. They're important. Your input is important for this process. So um, again, this, this presentation's on the website. So easy click right here to, to contact your representative. And this is the future. 
right here. And I told the, the, um, the, at the last meeting that I, these are last year's pictures because I couldn't bear to put on mass children. So, because this looks normal and it looks good and it's the future. Any questions? Are there any questions on article? Um, any raised hands or star nine feature? Excellent present, most excellent presentation as Al said. Thank you. Seeing no hands, I see clapping hands, but no hands raised. Okay, seeing no hands raised for questions on article eight, we will move on to article nine. To elect one at large school director who is a resident of the district for a three year term. Correct me if I'm wrong, is that Lindsay's position? No, is that, whose position is that? Oh, Trish, got Trish's it. position. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's Trish's position. Is there anybody that would like to speak toward that position? Raise hand, star nine feature. Don't see anybody. Okay. Moving on to article 10. Shall the voters of the West River Modified Union School District authorize moving the operational surplus, if any, from fiscal year 2021 to the reserve fund? Questions? Nope, don't see any hands raised. Article 11, shall $150,000 of unexpended proceeds of the bond authorized at the March 27, 2019 annual meeting be applied to the cost of upgrading the existing water system at Leland and Gray Middle and High School. Any questions on Article 11? Al's got a question. Actually, not a question, but I was just wondering if Lori might uh, be able to kind of elaborate on this and just explain the fact that um, we're not using any new dollars. And if you just wanted to maybe give a brief right. explanation. Absolutely. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, th these are not new dollars. This was um, a bond that we had asked the voters to approve for the um, for the. Um, biomass system at the high school um, and through grants and um, really just, you know, good um, funding, we did not spend it all. So um, by law, we can't spend it on anything else at all unless we get your approval. So um, we're coming back to you to ask to use the balance to do this um, water project at Leland and Gray. Excellent. Thank you for the explanation. Any questions on Article 11? Because there is no Article 12. Okay, seeing no other questions and no, other, no further business to come before the meeting, I declare the meeting adjourned. Again, I would like to thank the school board, administration, teachers, and all the employees for all they do for our towns. Don't forget to vote tomorrow, Wednesday, March 23rd, 4th. Sorry, I have it actually written wrong. Ken is correct, it is Wednesday, March 24th at your respective polling places from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. except Wyndham, which opens at 10. Have a great evening, stay safe, and enjoy the nice weather. <laughs>